Pam pam. Hello my friends and welcome. My name is Dennis and as you probably know I'm the airline captain. And I fly the Boeing 737NG that you may see just in this video. I'm, I will do the experiment here. So usually you may see the vlogs, the pilot vlogs, the reviews of the airplanes and uh, maybe flight simulator videos etc. But this video in particular is podcast, should be the podcast. And the podcast is very similar to radio program where you mostly hear what I say. And the visual aspect of this video is just a background. So I will not comment, you'll just see the cockpit video here. And just to listen to my voice, because today we're gonna discuss with you the very interesting topic. Um, I have many requests, many comments of young people mostly, and they always say to me, they mostly say to me that they want to become pilots. I want to become pilot, my dream is to become pilot. I have many of comments like that. So today we're gonna, I'm gonna tell you uh, if you really need to become a pilot these days, because now you know we're in the middle of the deep crisis. So I will show you the good side of this job and also the bad side. And uh, it's up to you to decide whether you really need it, because every job is has its own good sides and bad sides the pilot job is not an exception and uh, firstly let's speak about the bad sides and after that we'll go to the good sides uh, the first one that you may see now in the aviation industry that aviation job the pilot profession is very unstable it was unstable even before the crisis actually um, if you take for example me I already changed, uh, so that's my third airline that I'm working for. I changed two airlines, not because I wanted, but because I had to. Uh, we had pilot layoffs uh, in my first airline because I used to fly the ATR and my airline, the first airline, they just got rid of the ATR. I had to go to Indonesia and there I had just a two, year, two years contract. And after that, I'm employed here in Ukraine International Airlines. And boom, we have the crisis. So many, probably many of my friends will lose the job. Many of pilots will lose the job across the world right now because of the crisis. So the first unstable thing is that airline can go to crisis, even if the world economy is good, or the world crisis may uh, reinforce uh, the crisis in particular airline uh, also if you work for someone if you fly business jet there is no any changes in that every businessman has uh, the growth uh, I mean the financial growth and every businessman someday may lose everything so it doesn't matter if you are a corporate pilot or you are a commercial pilot um, the other thing why this uh, job is unstable is every year sometimes every six months depends on your local regulations you have to go through the medical check and of course it's very important to keep your body fit uh, it's very important but but you may not uh, count on that fully so maybe someday something may happen to you like uh, you may lose part of your body because of the accident or you may broke something then because of that you may not go uh, you may not pass your medical check uh, as a result so it's very fractal uh, job so you need to have the good medical condition the fit you need to keep your body just fit uh, sorry my friends i will not edit this uh, audio so i may do mistakes here but uh, i think it's very interesting for you as well because I speak live with you on this uh, podcast. Uh, the next thing why this uh, job is uh, very unstable is because every six months you need to go through the through your uh, flight simulator training and check. And we are not robots, so you may do uh, quite a um, severe mistake during your uh, check, the flight simulator check, and you may not uh, have passed uh, the flight simulator uh, someday it may happen 
uh, we are not gods and uh, yes in case you fail your flight simulator you have other attempt as as a rule and also it depends on your local regulations but mainly you have the other attempt to pass but basically you may not at some point probably you may not pass your skill test or flight simulator check it may happen so that is why this job is unstable it's very low uh, the very unreal i would say scenario if you are the airline pilot if you are a captain flying the boeing 737 it's very unreal for you to not to pass the skill test but in the end uh, it may happen especially if you change the airline if you were flying in one airline and you want to go to another airline maybe they have different requirements for your flight simulator checks uh, for your skill test and there you may not pass i know one guy who passed the interview with emirates and he used to fly in indonesia and uh, he successfully passed the interview he did all the steps they hired him and uh, after three months of the ground school or maybe two months i'm not sure about it right now he didn't pass the flight simulator check so he lost his previous job and he lost his job in emirates uh, we'll speak about emirates uh, in this video i'm sure many more times today okay the okay it was unstable yes and now let's go to the schedule because then you work as air, airline pilot usually you have the schedule so in my particular airline i'll have the schedule in the end of the every month so i'll have the schedule for the next one it's very useful then you have the schedule for the whole month in some airlines you have scheduled just uh, for one week ahead uh, very inconvenient i would say to plan your life uh, so according to some schedule in the, some airlines uh, you are out of home so you're gonna stay out of home for many many days especially if you fly the long haul airplanes in uh, well in my airline it's okay so usually you fly long haul if you fly the triple seven you go to new york and you spend not many days there and maybe the next day you come back um but in many airlines you spend quite a lot of time abroad uh, away from your home if you have family have kids it may not fit your lifestyle um but uh, in most of the airlines you are okay you stay at home but you have night flights especially yes in my airline before the crisis we used to have lots of night flights scheduled and uh, yes in the winter time we have many night flights because we fly during mostly during the night time at night for every human being it's better to sleep not to fly so think about it again uh, then you choose your airline and uh, i'm okay with night flights but it, of course the day flights is better for me now we fly not a lot of flights because of the crisis and now even night flights are pretty much okay for me to fly i'm very happy to fly night flights and day day flights because of the crisis uh, no matter uh, what <laughs> what flights do i have just to it, i'm happy just to have the flights um so and also the schedule if you have planned maybe for your daughter's birthday maybe to celebrate the new year or something um you have your schedule and that may take those days so no matter what party you're planned for no matter uh what you want you need to fly if you have the flight so it's the back downside of being a pilot for uh, to work for some airline because it, it's still a job my friends so if you don't want you need to fly if you uh, want you also need to fly um, there is it's not about the safety criteria okay if you are not sure if the flight will be safe of course you don't need to fly but if you everything is okay and you just don't want to fly because of your birthday or your wife's birthday no you still need to fly that's the downside one more downside of this job uh, let's speak about the third aspect um, you cannot be employed everywhere 
so I already received many comments. Dennis, I'm from India, I want to be employed, I want to become a pilot in Emirates, for example. Uh, to become a pilot in Emirates, firstly, you need to have the good flight experience. Um, I had to have uh, 3000 flight hours before I applied to Emirates. Uh, yes, I applied them before going to Ukraine International Airlines. I tried myself there and actually I passed the interview, but in the end, um, I didn't, I do not work with them. Uh, but anyway, if you have the nice flight experience, lots of flight hours, uh, good experience on more commercial airplane, you can apply there and I'm sure that the chances to pass the screening for Emirates are is quite high, but if you are beginner, no, um, they only have the candidate program for local citizens. So if you are if you have the UA citizenship, you can apply for the local program. But still, you need to be the best of the best. Um, but then you have the pilot license, as I say to you. Yes, you have the pilot license in India, for example, or you may, may have your license in United States. Let's speak about the United States, the FAA license. If you have the FAA license, you cannot be employed in Europe, for example, or in uh, Australia. For that countries, you need to have uh, the local uh, issued pilot license. So if you want, you may convert it temporary in this process called validation. But not many airlines would uh, like to hire you if they not really need the pilots so if they struggle if they're struggling they may uh, pay for you even higher than for local ones they may uh, help you with validation process of your license but in the end you need to pass for a local license for example if you want to work in the european union you may have validation just for you can have it just for one year if you want to work longer you need to pass all these subjects and fifteen thousand questions to obtain the european license of course with help of the airline because if you just want to pass the exams uh as far as i remember you cannot do it so you need to be other uh, or employed you need to rather have the employment ship in uh, your uh, airline or you need to go to local european union flight school the same applies for indian issued pilot license uh, indian D dgca or something uh, if you have indian license you have the ico license with that license you can go maybe to china to uh, Arab Emirates, you may go to other Asian countries, but for United States, you cannot you cannot be employed there. To be employed in the United States, you need to have the FAA license, you need to have the right and permission to work, to live and work in the United States. And also for Europe, as I heard, you need to have the right to work, leave, or sometimes even the European passport. So, mm, yes, could be quite tricky. If you are a pilot, it doesn't mean that all countries, the all companies will open, uh, will be open for you. So, try to get the license you really need. So, the first, if you apply for your pilot training, apply to that country that you want to work in. So, yes, I am. I have the Ukraine issued pilot license, it's IKO license, and I was able to work with it in uh, Indonesia. Very nice. The next thing is medical factor and stress. Uh, you know, pilot job is quite stressful job. If you just search in the Google the most stressful jobs, uh, you'll find that pilot job is one of the most stressful. Uh, because you have an um, unusual schedule, one day you fly during the daytime, the next day you fly uh, during the night time, so it affects your body, if it affects your uh, way you think, and also you fly in the airplane. Airplane is very, uh, it's very complicated thing, my friends, it's a very complex environment, and all the uh, things that happening in the skies they all very rapid happening very rapidly and you need to think very fast okay especially then you the fuel 
Okay, it depends. Then you don't have fuel, you don't have time. So fuel actually is time. Um, then the weather is not good in your airport. You just check the fuel. If the fuel is not enough, you go to your alternate airport. If the weather is not good there, you need, you you are in a stressful condition, my friends. Not every flight, but there are some of the flights. I would say maybe two or one percent of the flights that you are you experience stress mainly because of, because of the weather. Uh, if you speak about the aircraft failures, um, I haven't had any big failures, so I have around 6,500 hours of uh, flight time uh, throughout my career, and I hadn't had major technical events and then I was flying. So I think the aviation, the airplanes themselves are very, very reliable. I used to fly the Antonov ATR 72 and 42 and Boeing 737NG. Uh, so the next factor, you sometimes you need to leave where you don't want to leave. Uh, I didn't want to leave in Indonesia, but I had to. So then I lost my job. I just googled the pilot needed the ATR captain job, and I found that uh, the captains were needed for Garuda Indonesia, and I, I applied there, and I start my program my flying in Indonesia not because I wanted to go there but because I had to I had to find a job to feed my family secure the financial state of my family so yes because of this instability of the aviation industry sometimes you need to find um, the other place to to fly the Indonesia is not the worst case it's quite nice country nice people and the airline that I was employed is fantastic actually my friends but uh, sometimes you may find yourself flying well my friend is now going to Afghanistan uh, I wouldn't say it's a perfect flight place to be a pilot so yeah you sometimes you you are not to choose where you want to fly and leave um, the next step is salary <laughs> It's quite interesting, yeah, because you think that pilots uh, earn quite a lot of money, but actually, actually, it's not. It's not uh, like that because we have lots of high level action of responsibility. Imagine surgeon salary; it's quite high. I know in uh, Western countries, especially, but so surgeon is responsible usually for one life. Yes, he's doing the surgery and uh, if something go wrong one person may die here we have the aircraft full of people if something goes wrong if we do not do what we have to do uh, many people will lose their, their life so the responsibility is so huge for pilot uh, i would say for pilot profession in general uh, what i see in industry that the salary in general is quite low for that so there are many 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 professions with much less responsibility with much less things you need to study and know where you may find um, quite uh, quite better salary compared to pilots especially now than the in the crisis then the salaries drops around the world in several times actually so now yeah the salary is not very good there are some of the places in the world where you may find nice salaries as it used to be in china they had very nice salaries and all of the united states pilots and uh, other pilots they wanted to just go to china and earn quite a lot of money they're tax free so quite a lot of stuff and we if we speak about the middle east uh, emirates and other uh, airlines well, the salary there is quite, I would say, average as for pilots, maybe just a little bit more than average, but uh, the prices for living are very, very high. I mean, if you want to go shopping, that would cost you, cost you several times more than in Europe, let's say. So yes, the salary, I think the salary in the Middle East should be as in China or something so yes the salaries are not perfect as for pilots uh, if you speak about the career in United States I I think it's it's kind of tricky 
if you want to become a pilot in, a pilot in the United States. Um, the FAA, FAA license is actually the coolest license, uh, the US license, the pilot license, because um, you don't need to go through your uh, training, uh, th I mean, uh, through your simulator checks uh, to keep the license, unlike in the European Union. So if you don't have gaps in your flying, um, you can secure your license. So if you, have, if you don't have the brakes, I mean, if you fly constantly, uh, the requirement for training, for the simulator training, applies for airlines, not for pilots. So you always keep your license current as usual. It's a good thing. So just go through your medical and you don't care how to uh, prolong your license in the future, how to renew it. And basically you keep most of your type ratings before. Uh, that's what I heard then I was flying in Indonesia then I was speaking to uh, United States pilots uh, about US career in particular so first you obtain the license everything is nice uh, but you have to fly the small aircraft uh, for regional airlines maybe Sir J or even uh, turboprops ATRs for quite a long, long time until you obtain the ATP rating. The ATP rating is Airline Transport Pilot Rating. With that one you can fly Boeing, Airbus or bigger airplanes. Uh, but then you're ready to fly it. Uh, you need to wait for, of course, for the screening in particular airline. And every airline in the United States, every major airline has uh, quite strong unions. So if you apply there, and they will hire you, you'll be in the bottom list. You will have the less salary possible and you'll fly the smallest airplane there. And little by little you go ahead with your seniority list, seniority list, yes, but it you may sp spend years and sometimes decades to reach the captaincy, to be a captain in a major uh, United States carrier like Delta United so that is why you may often see that captains in those airlines are quite uh, elderly uh, pilots here in uh, Eastern Europe in the European Union you may be captain after just three years flying or as a first officer here you may be uh, employed as first officer on Boeing 737 or Airbus just from your flight school let's say you need to have from what I heard around just 500 hours no ATP L license no ATP ratings you can go uh, almost straight to fly the Airbus or Boeing so I think the career perspectives for young people here in Europe are much better than in the United States um, the next step, you can't do anything more <laughs> if you're a pilot. So usually you don't, if you speak about the world in general, you don't need the uh, college education, you don't need the university education uh, to become a pilot. Uh, that is why usually you go to the flight school, you finish it and you work as a pilot. But if something happens, I mean, you lose your medical license, medical certificate, sorry, maybe airline will just lay off you at some day because of the crisis. You'll be just open to the world without any anything to do because the one thing you may do is just fly the airplane. So you need to find yourself somewhere. Um, in my country, uh, even the flight attendants, <laughs> they need to have uh, the uh, education. I mean, the bachelor degree or maybe even master degree to apply for airline. And for pilots, it's like that. So in some countries, they require you to do that. But uh, my degree is a pilot engineering degree, so I can be maybe engineer or I can, I have the master's degree, so that is why maybe I can be the teacher for young pilots for newcomers. That is what I can do if I lose my job as a pilot. Uh, but in general, I would recommend you to have, if you have the money, if you have time to have the uh, education, like college education or university degree, 
it's better to have it just in case because this job is as i said to you it's very unstable nowadays so the pilot life is life is very similar to life as the sportsman yes uh, you need to find a good airline then you're young and healthy and then you reach it you fly there so it's uh, like a life of a football player you need to find a good club to play for and because your career is expected not to be very long and it may finish just um, briefly in a matter of days or maybe seconds if you have some trauma or something so the same goes for a pilot and the last thing i think the bad thing for being a pilot actually uh, the worst thing i think and it's also the biggest problem for modern uh, commercial aviation industry you need to have quite a lot of money to become a pilot um, there are still some uh, government supported programs in some of the countries but they are not a lot my friends and they hire the best of the best so you need to be the you need to have good grades you need to be uh, one head higher than others i mean in a matter of your knowledge to apply uh, to be hired for a government supported program the same goes to cadet programs of airlines now many people want to apply everywhere not many uh, assessments around the world because of the crisis there were not many before but now there are almost none so yeah you need to be the best of the best or you need to have the money to for your pilot training quite a lot of money i was speaking with one pilot in uh, he used to fly the crg 1000 in garuda uh, he used to be the first officer and he was flying for five years and he said to me that he still owns uh, 80,000 euro to the bank that gave him the credit to become a pilot. It's a very, I would say, the biggest problem here because the airlines uh, and um, the industry itself, uh, they don't hire, they don't want to invest in the young pilots main, mainly. They want to hire ready pilots, but ready pilots, not always uh, the pilots with good skills. Uh, they may be just pilots with money, so they invest to their career. Um, I would rather hire maybe the guy without the money, but with a very good skills. Because as I say to you, if we compare this job with a surgeon job, this job requires quite, quite a lot of responsibility. Pum, pum. Now let's speak about the pluses of this job. Uh, if you like planes, uh, such as sophisticated mechanisms, uh, vehicles, this job is for you because here now I fly jet, quite sophisticated commercial jet, and I love to fly it, just piloting this. The feeling of piloting this airplane is so fantastic, my friends. Also, then you work for kind of airline, you communicate with the aviation related people and aviation related people share your passion to aviation and they are also fantastic. Um, also, if you have a good schedule, uh, I now have good schedule in my airline. Uh, I don't fly a lot, but in general, even before the crisis, yes, we had night flights, but the flight schedule was quite good for me as for me because I live just near to the airport like 15 minutes away so I fly and I always come back I didn't have lots of uh, days uh, spent somewhere abroad so if, even if it's night flight you fly during the uh, you go from home in the evening and you come back in the morning so you always come back to your family if you have the family it's very very important for you so I like flights and the, the flight schedule in my current airline is nice. Also, if you like traveling, it's a great opportunity to, for you to reach other cities, uh, to see the other culture. Uh, well, for me, it was quite opening to visit the Indonesia. 
uh, different culture, different people. So at first I like it, but after two years, maybe I, I needed to come back. I understood that I needed to come back, not because of me, but because of my family, because um, my young daughter, she was uh, growing, she needed to go to the school and I want her to go to our local school here in Ukraine or rather than stay in Indonesia. So yes, uh, traveling is also an option, but it also depends on uh, where you employed. So where are you employed? Uh, if you fly long haul airplanes, you may have lots of overnight stays somewhere, uh, so you may have quite a lot of time to explore the world. Uh, but mainly, I think after this uh, crisis, the health crisis will go away. You may have the opportunity to explore the world because, yeah, recently we had the new flights to. Sri Lanka or something, but there uh, our tourists just visit the hotel. They are not allowed even to leave the hotel because of this uh, permission, uh, the government restrictions, I would say. Uh, the plus, the next plus is um, salary. Yes, my friends, <laughs> it, it is the negative, was the negative, the bad thing, but now I'm going to the good thing because mainly in the world, I'm saying it again, you don't need to have the college education or you don't need to have uh, the university degree to become a pilot. So just go to your flight school um, and you obtain the license. Uh, and without the education, uh, I mean, without the a master's degree or bachelor's degree, you can have uh, almost the same salary as surgeon uh, who spent lots of years uh, studying his or her subjects. So here it's much easier way for you to follow and get not rich but get enough money for living. With a pilot's salary, I still consider it's quite low compared uh, to what uh, uh, what duties we are doing, the, the, the level of responsibility, but still it's enough uh, for your living. So you can buy apartments or you may buy, buy a house or you may buy a car, you may have the family, you may spend some money for your kids' education. So I would say normal living, normal living, but you'll never get rich with it. The one thing, the one way how you can get rich is maybe two ways. The first way is to fly in China <laughs> with their salaries that were before the crisis, or you may invest the money, the small money that you have uh, from your pilot's salary, invest it somewhere, buy, I don't know, Bitcoin, invest it to real estate or something. So invest in areas, in Tesla, of course, <laughs> invest in those areas uh, where you see uh, the growth, okay? Uh, it's risky thing, but you can do it and there you can get rich, but working just as a pilot will never bring you to what I think is rich life of style. Then you have your private jet, I don't know, huge cows, uh, house, sorry, not cows, house and the sport car, so we'll never afford it, probably, uh, I'm almost sure about it working just as a pilot for commercial airline. Well, uh, you may also work as a pilot, as a corporate pilot, uh, flying uh, with some Arab Sheikh, and there you can have the superb salary. Maybe that is the way, uh, but I don't think uh, you'll have this opportunity in your life, I mean. Um, what about the other plus? Uh, the airline community lifestyle. Um, I was in lack of that when I used to fly in Indonesia. I felt myself, I felt uh, quite different in local aviation community. So I was out of that. So my duties were just to fly the airplane. I hadn't had uh, quite uh, good friends there. Uh, but here in uh, Ukraine International that I'm flying, we have, have lots of friends. And if you like, for example, football, you can have someone who share your passion to football. 
If you like sports, uh, yeah, I already told you about football. If you like motorcycles, like I do, we have our small uh, community in my current airline that shares uh, the passion to motorcycles. That means I have lots of friends and my friends. It's very important. It's very important to feel um, not to feel yourself in this airline, not only as a pilot, not only as employee, but also um, some kind of spiritual link to the people in uh, your airline, your friends. So now actually they were my co-workers, but now our motorcycle club in my airline, I can say that they are my bros, they are my friends, my close friends and that will bring your lifestyle to new level i would say so it's very very important to share the same interests in your airline in your let's say industry the other big plus in some of the airlines you may have discounts uh, mainly ticket discount so if you want to fly somewhere uh, with your family you may have the ticket discount or sometimes you may have the free ticket to travel uh, for you, for your family, you may uh, explore something, some city, some country. Uh, if you have the holiday, you may spend it with your family and you may save quite a lot of money for traveling. Uh, also, discounts may, apply, may be applied for airlines group. For example, Star Alliance or uh, Sky Team. So you may have discounts within those airline groups. Uh, and also may have discounts like in Emirates, you have the special employee card. And with that card, you may have discounts not only, only for your tickets, but also in uh, Dubai facilities. For example, in uh, Dubai Mall, in some of the restaurants, uh, shops, you may have quite nice uh, discounts that helps you to save uh, the money because uh, the Dubai is a very expensive place to live. Um, also, if we speak about Emirates, um, Qatar, uh, they have um, all the facilities provided for the pilots. So if you may live for free, they will pay for your bills as usual, and they also may pay for your kids uh, education in a school or maybe even in a university. There you may have the uh, low percent credits to buy the car etc 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 so basically you spend money if you work for them you basically spend money for uh, your food and for what you really need to buy i don't know some computers uh, and other stuff uh, so free tickets discounts facilities are very helpful to save your money and that that is quite good. The next step is uh, you work for someone and it's just your job. So yes, of course, you may say that it's better to work for your, for yourself, for your company, to have your own business. But if you have your own business, you'll have quite a lot of headache. Here you are a pilot, you work on someone and basically it's not your job to take care about the finances of the airline. There are some trained people with uh, financial education who should be cared about it. It's not your job. Your job is just to fly the airplane. The, and that's actually great uh, if you just fly. You like your job, you fly, and it's good, my friends. It's good, uh, in some way, it's good to work for someone because you, if you like your job, if you work for someone, you have the less headache what is happening in your airline. But if something will go wrong with, with your airline, you have to find the other job. So yes, you are like not in the control of the situation of what is happening in your airline. But it's quite good from one side, as I say to you. Uh, the next step is this job is quite unique. So if you speak, if you say that you're a pilot, uh, it's not easy job, it's a respectful job and uh, not many people may be a pilot first because it's very expensive, I would say. And the second reason, yes, not many people may, may be a pilot, might be a pilot. So that is why if you want to do something unique, not to sit in an office doing the paper job, 
if you want to explore something new, this job is for you. I I really like my job, my friends, because it's very unique, it's not standard, and it's outstanding job. And maybe the last plus for today, yes, sometimes you fly on your birthday, on the new year, and other parties that may be in your family, but still you have lots of day offs. It depends, of course, on your airline. For low-cost carriers, you fly quite a lot. But if we speak about the standard uh, airlines, um, there you may have uh, you may have half of your month spending home. It doesn't matter that you have the vacation or holidays. It just means that you spend the the time at home, and it's actually good, my friends. So we have. We had a nice schedule and we still have a nice schedule in my current airline so i spent quite a lot of time being home even before the crisis time it's a very good thing if you speak about if you speak about the work in office with papers there you need to work from monday usually till friday all the day and even for the weekends you still need to do some of your job here you just flown the airplane you landed it you don't care what is happening if your uh, average pilot, I mean the captain, if you are not going, if you are not uh, an instructor, or maybe you are not uh, the manager, the pilot manager or tech pilot, you just go to your apartments, to your house, and spend the time with your family. I think it's absolutely great, my friends, that you don't care, you don't care, just fly, you just did your job, and here is your rest. You can spend it with your family absolutely fantastic job my friends as for me uh, yes it has downsides it has upsides i told you about what i think uh, but if you want to become a pilot first consider this uh, before actually investing the money uh, to become a pilot so if you like it just apply there and fly if you think oh maybe i don't like it or i i don't know it's better not to invest the money. You need to really like these jobs because yes, it has downsides, my friends. It has downsides, but I like it and I choose to be a pilot. I choose to spend a life for this profession to become a pilot. And I think I do not regret my choice. Thank you very much for watching this video, my friends. I hope you like this format. Sorry about my English. It's not uh, quite perfect. I'm trying to improve it by watching um, English, uh, English in internet, on YouTube, uh, listening to BBC radio and other stuff. But what you need to do, my friends, I know you're awesome. You need to follow, you need to do the awesome guy checklist so first like this video then subscribe to my channel after that ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for watching this video and have a great time bye bye pam pam